Hey Trojans, it's Jeff. It is Friday. Um, I'm trying to get this out by five o'clock. It's only 2.30 right now, but I at least wanted to do the video part of this. I'm still waiting on some person to get me some, and I got a little bit of a calendar piece to do too, just to make sure we're on the same page. Really want to express to you how everybody in our building is part of tier one, our nurse is part of tier one, principal's part of tier one, teachers, um, nutrition specialists, everybody's part of tier one. Everyone has practices they do within tier one. I'm not going to read these slides to you. You can do that on your own, but please read through these until you get to the kids section. Over the weekend, you can look at the kids section like the day before school starts. I guess that'd be Labor Day, but at least you're going to need to know this. Um, the parts I don't have done yet is the calendaring. There's going to be 14 days of uh, tier one stuff that our kids need to know to be successful. Um, just a little bit of inspiration there and definitely show some of this to the kids if you want, but you can kind of see on the slides or you will see on the slides exactly where it starts for when you start meeting with the kids on Tuesday and Troy time. All right, uh, these are our Excel practices. These are our school-wide tier one. This is what we've installed, but some people will be installing. Again, you can read this. Uh, this is cultivating a culture. We know we're very strong with capturing kids' hearts. We want to continue to get better every year. We have to change every year because our kids change every year, as does our staff. We're high on avid school-wide implementations. We've got some great indicators showing that we've been on a great path, and we really need everybody to bound together and come together because we need all of us to set the proper tone for this school year, and I expect us to do that. Um, Let's see, these are the resources that you see that are gonna help you get through the slides or help you get through Troy time and some of your class time to help sprinkle in all the things our kids need to know so they can be successful with tier one. As you see, there's five, actually there's six, the one with the star right there, that's what you're looking at right now. This is the tier one best practice slideshow. So this is kind of our home base. And then you got five other resources that work off of that. I wanted to give this to you in one big swoop and not piecemeal it. You have it all right here. Okay. So if you're not paying attention right now, which I can tend to do when I'm like listening to a video, you have all the resources right here. Okay. The very first resource, and this is totally setting a tone, is taking Troy time attendance. Yes. Show this video, not video, the slideshow to your kids. Painstakingly go through it because you're gonna coach them up on what the expectations are for when they do have to go to intervention and then when they stay in home, Troy. And I've been so amazed by the services our kids get. Edith Andrade Hernandez, who does all the scheduling for interview or for intervention, she gives every one of our students a personalized email of where they're supposed to be. And then once the intervention teacher says, yes, Jeff has gone from an E grade or an F grade, he now is sitting at a D plus or C minus, whatever. He's good, he's solid, he can back him back into home Troy. She emails the kids too and lets them know that. And then if they need to go to another intervention location, they also get an email from her on that. There's no reason why our kids should not know where to go. It's important you go over this with them that you know it, they know it, everybody knows it, we're done with kids drifting. All right, that's a tone setter, I need your help. The next one is a video, and that's what uh, Joanna is helping us with, one of our gear up gals, she's just waiting on a little bit of uh, editing help, um, and that's the only piece I'm waiting on along with my own calendaring. The next one, item three, the slides, that's the student handbook, try to hit most of the highlights. Take your time on this. we got 14 days. Sprinkle it into your class times. You're going to see on the calendar where we're pretty prescriptive during Troy, but more of these are the things we need you to sprinkle in during class time. We don't want kids to think that school-wide expectations only live in Troy. They live across the campus 24-7. The next one is, is uh, number four, and those are slides. Those are student rights and responsibilities. And that's never a fun one to go through. Some of you have personalities. You probably can make it fun and uh, you need to make sure the kids are paying attention. One of the things they're gonna do after covering the student handbook, after covering rights and responsibilities, they're all gonna be expected to sign a Google form that they've had it covered with them, okay? And then the last one is one I released to you last week. It's just our bell schedules, days one, two, three, and four. Um, everything we're doing, it gives you the tour that 10th, 11th, and 12th grade will take during Troy time. It's your schedule. 
what time you're supposed to do it during the two hours or so of Troy time. And the only thing that wasn't added to number five, the doc, the Google Doc, is the fact that we are going to have our freshmen pick up their Chromebooks on September 6th during Troy time. They have almost a three hour long Troy time, got plenty of time to do that. So I think Molly has already sent out a calendar on that. As far as new students, that's the piece I don't have in my brain right now. I think maybe Molly released that. If not, she'll get that out to you. We know we're going to see this. We know kids are going to roll their eyes. We know kids are going to go, yeah, I've heard this already. Pretend this is your student, your child, your niece, niece, your nephew, and they just need to hear it. We are here setting a tone. We don't need to say that to the kids. We want everybody to be part of this. We need everybody all hands on deck so we can have a successful tier one across the campus. This is the page that's going to start showing the calendaring. The next page, don't, don't lock in on the next one. That's still a draft, but you'll see this is kind of the format. I got it broken down into things you do in Troy time only, things you would do during class time to sprinkle in, and then it needs to be done in both. So you can see Friday the 16th, which is, you know, 15 days away. Um, that day, you need to have all of your Capturing Kids Hearts posters up. That shouldn't be brand new news. We told you that when we were at Green River. Um, you'll see at the bottom of the calendar on the 13th and 14th, we do have grade level meetings. And we're going to start with the seniors. We want them helping us set a tone and the freshmen. And then we jump into the following week. And I can tell you all the Capturing Kids Hearts social contracts need to be done by the 23rd up and posted. If you're a brand new teacher to us, uh, you're going through your training on the 22nd and 23rd. Uh, you've got a little bit more time. So don't panic, okay, if you're new to us. All right. Uh, the next few slides are more for you, the teacher. This is one I showed you at Green River, I think. Please don't tell kids this is something we asked you to do. Okay, you got to own it. Okay, you got to say this is what we're about and we'll be fine. Um, here's some tights. Please read through all of these. We are limiting kids to two hall passes per quarter per pass. So you might want to practice your delivery. Think about that. Each student is allowed up to two per quarter per class. Please keep track in your own room. Students will not be ignored in an emergency situation. Make sure they know that. They got to know that. This is about learning, restroom safety, not squashing basic needs, okay? Any students with documented medical needs, you're going to know who they are. You're going to get that from our new nurse, Lori Wood, and I'll make sure she gets that out as soon as possible. So kids have to do a great job planning their day. We want our kids being hydrated. We want our kids using the restroom, but they can use it during between class times, at lunch, and before school too. All right. 10-10 rule, you're going to cover that. But basically, here's where the slides begin. It's in English. Unfortunately, we didn't have a Spanish version of the mission statement and the vision. I want you to go over this with your kids. They need to know. They need to know what we're about. Let them roll their eyes. Let them sigh, whatever they do. I think most of the kids are going to show up and give you their best, okay? But I need you to be at your best, too. I'm going to talk to them about what is Troy. I'm going to talk to them about Troy Students of the Month. That's big around here. We've been giving out about maybe 60, 70, 80 per month. Um, we have the opportunity, we have the capacity to about 140 or 50 per month. So I'd like to see that up. That's just more opportunities for kids. Then you break down each letter of Troy, T-R-O-Y. And then you have the slide that you can tell about you. Again, you're probably going to want to make a copy of all these slides, and then you can kind of trick yours out the way you want, but don't mess with the resources because that'll really mess you up. Here's some things that you can do to embed great Excel routines in your classrooms. Again, make a copy of this, and then you can trick it out the way you want. Another thing that I think is going to be really important is you explain your why for the 10-10 rule, okay? If you have some whys, I always tell the kids because teachers need you the first 10 because they're trying to get across what they're going to cover that day. In the last 10, they're going to make sure you've got what you need and they're going to check the things you don't have yet so they can make adjustments the next day. And we want the hallways cleared by that time. Okay, this is your reasons. You're going to give reason one. You're going to give reason two. This is why you want to make a copy. And then the way you roll in your classroom, expressing, expressing your classroom expectations, do you allow cell phones? To what degree do you allow them? Earpods and headphones, to what degree? Hats and head coverings, to what degree? Out of class passes, well, it's going to be two per quarter, and you're not going to ignore an emergency. My reasons why are you need to let them know your reasons. I believe our kids are sophisticated enough to handle more than one rule. 
in one way across the school campus. If you have great whys, your kids are going to follow your lead and they'll be fine. Hall pass protocol, that hasn't changed from last year. So if you're new this year, make sure you look at it, read this, read this to your kids, Have do some choir reading or choral reading, whatever you want to call it. Make sure they know you have to check for understanding just like you would as you're going to have a test with your students. Okay, this is one we want to continue to come back to. This is how we can help our kids or how kids can help themselves when the learning doesn't stick. Okay, you can read that. Definitely read that with your students. Have them give examples of how it works around here if you have students that have been around a while. And this is the development of the social contract. You might want to save this one until it's time to do it. Again, you've heard the experts, don't do it the first week. Maybe the second week, if you know your kids well, by the third week, that's the deadline. Okay, and then talk about the four questions, all right? And that's kind of the end of it. You guys sprinkle this in as you want in your classes. Some of this is going to happen in Troy time per the calendar. And that's the poster for the four questions. That's the poster for referral process. And then we also have the Spanish versions of each. So you're going to put four total posters on each of three walls in your classroom. If you absolutely have to have it on your fourth wall, um, we might have to do some extra ordering. OK, so heads up on that. And here's where this, the Spanish slides begin. OK, so if you're teaching in multilingual, this is might be where you want to go. OK, that's enough information for now. Hopefully I can get this out by five o'clock today. I have two and a half hours. I think we're going to beat it. All right. Have a great day, guys. Uh, Make sure, oh, on the resource form, I'm scrolling back. Hopefully this isn't making you motion sick. But when you go to the resource form on the slide, it shows where all the resources are. You'll see after each one who's in charge of those. Those are the people you ask the questions of. So if it's rights and responsibilities, you talk to Lori. If it's uh, how to take attendance in Troy time, reach out to Best Shy. Pretty much everything's Jeff Gardner. So there you go. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Appreciate you guys. And we will see you soon. Thank you.